Welcome back everyone. For today's video, I want to show you five tips on how to improve your chess using geometry, the geometry of the board. So the first thing I want to give you, the first tip is crossing into the enemy's territory in the first moves in the opening phase. Most likely, if you want to cross into the enemy's territory, it will be a mistake or even in an accuracy. So for example, here I have this brilliant idea, which is not uh, an g 3 of going ig 3 attacking this rook. The problem with this move is I don't really have a good way to, conti to continue this game with this knight here. So, okay, my opponent uh, plays rook f2, which is also an inaccuracy, but it's not super clear why. Okay, maybe I can I can go here, but this knight can be easily challenged if they play knight d2. That's a problem. So, whenever you cross, cross into the enemy territory, it has to be in the middle game where some pieces have been traded, or in the end game, right, where you're putting pressure on your opponent and you have only a few pieces. So, okay, like the game continues. B6, knight g5. So, knight g5, they're crossing into my, my territory. The first thing you want to do is get rid of that piece if possible. And that's what I did. So, okay, I just took the knight. No brainer. Now, they have this, um, there is not so brilliant idea of taking the knight. Instead, they just have to take this bishop. And now I have problems, okay, it's not, not really a problem, but I have to reroute this knight. I guess they can also play this, so I am getting in kind of a trouble, right? Okay, they take my knight. The second tip of this video is going to be, look for the alignment of the pieces. For example, here we have three pieces on the back rank. Not really a good way to punish it, but in this case we also have the queen and the rook on the same diagonal. So it was easy to see bishop g4, bishop h4. We have the alignment of the pieces. Once the queen takes, I can I don't have to worry so much about this rook because this comes with tempo, right? I take this rook with tempo, they had to take, and now I move my rook. So yeah, just look for these two things. First, crossing into the enemy's territory is gonna be kind of risky. If they cross into your territory, Try to get rid of that piece as soon as possible. Don't think about it too much. Okay. A beautiful way to analyze the board in this way is just counting at the diagonals. We have 13 diagonals in this direction and it will be other 13 in the opposite direction, right? So 26 on the board because we can find many moves just by looking at this diagonal, especially when we have the bishop pair. Here I have the bishop pair, so I can use these diagonals, maybe more. All right, so let's see, see this sequence of moves. All the moves I found, I used the geometry of the of the board. So first here, I'm getting hit by the by the knight, and this pawn is hanging. If I do anything else, like let's say here, I'm doing fine, but it's very passive, right? Now the opponent has a move like knight c5, and I don't really have much. Now, what if instead of going very passive, retreating? No, I'm just gonna go for this diagonal. Right, I am attacking this this rook. Now the rook is gonna have to move, so the rook moves perfectly fine. And the next move I found was okay. Let's just play f4, protecting the pawn. Just makes sense, right? Now this one is a mistake. It's a huge mistake because I go wait, wait a second. Alignment of the pieces, right? There is one square apart, so I can find b4. But he can also capture my bishop. So this bishop is hanging, I have to retreat it. And if I if I retreat it here, for example, then black has time, has time to move the knight. I don't want to do that. So I just take this knight on g6. Once they take back, now I play a b4. So yeah, this, these two pieces are fork. They attack my bishop, I move my bishop. This move is not going anywhere. After bishop g5, now we get knight d6 attacking my bishop so i don't really have a problem here i first want to take this bishop right so they don't have any any counterplay d4 attacking the knight which is again another mistake because now i can play knight d4 and my whole idea is to go here forking these two pieces the opponent makes a mistake playing b6 
and they resign after this move. So yeah, I, I only I was thinking about, okay, what is the alignment of the pieces here? So I don't have to, um, I don't have to protect this pawn anymore because I'm attacking this rook, right? This alignment, and now there's other alignment of the, these two pieces. Yeah, and they don't, they just don't have many good moves after this. All right, so this alignment of the pieces is not to take lightly because we can use it as a thinking system when we're playing chess. Here, let's look at these two rooks, which are first aligned to this rook and also aligned to this queen. And there may be other alignments, but that one is the most important. And I put my two rooks there kind of on purpose. Okay, so one of the best moves in the position was to play king g7. But I also have a plan here. I, I, I have a plan of going bishop e7 because now this is hanging. If uh, white doesn't find the right move, this is kind of hanging. So, okay, now with this hint, maybe you can feel free to pause the video, but this should be clear. Okay, now my next move is going to be rook takes on c uh, on c4. They can never take because now they just lose the queen. So after <laughs> after that, my opponent resigned. They take this, they take the, my knight. Okay, I just take back and they resign because they're just down one full piece. And I just, it's too much. Okay, another beautiful alignment of the pieces is going to be this combination of rook and knight. Okay, so now black plays this move, taking this pawn. It's all good because now we have mate. I think it's even mating four or five. It doesn't matter. Now we can play knight c6. So given a check, this cannot happen. There is a pin. So we have they have to move this piece, the king, and now we take this rook, and it's just completely losing. Okay, so you always look for this alignment, even when we're defending. I think it's easier to miss when we're defending, because we we don't think this knight can land here. But yeah, it can land here. We can see multiple examples, maybe many hours of this alignment of the pieces, because the pieces are going to land with some alignment to other piece in some way, right? Uh, here, let's say we're playing white and we just push e4, then we get queen e7. So this is a mistake because now we can even castle or get this king out of the way and put a rook here, right? So this is a mistake. Now, okay, we take this pawn, opening up this line, and once black takes, we can move this king here. It wasn't the most precise move, but they got king d2. And this pawn is also hanging, so it's really difficult to play for black. Now, they still play uh, we still, uh, king d8, so they understand probably this alignment of the pieces. Now, rook a to e1. Uh, yeah, we have to get this queen out of the way. But yes, see how, how you get into a lot of trouble with black, just because you put this queen here in the middle of in, in the middle of, of this attack but there is no continuation to this attack right so yeah also when you make this alignment make sure you have more than one piece to attack with uh, the queen here is not doing much probably you had a rook yeah that would be something else that would be a different a different game completely so all right okay this is going to be a little bit of game analysis to see how much how important is control of the center throughout all the phases of the game? We think about it when we study openings. Oh yeah, I'm controlling d4 and e5. But it's as nearly as important in the middle game and also end game. Okay, so I have an example here with Magnus Carlsen game. Uh, give me a second here. I think I'm going to reload. Uh, because there was some... Okay, so we, got, we now get g4. g4... And we have this decision, okay, what do we do with this knight? We, do we retreat? No. Okay, let's just cross into the enemy's territory. Magnus knows when to do this. They take here, and we're activating the queen in one move. So, okay, that's perfect. You have a very specific reason to cross. Now, f4, h5, you cannot really take here, because now you're activating this rook. So, why play c5? Okay. Queen g4 offering the trade of queens. Queen takes. And now we get f5. Putting a lot of pressure uh, with this uh, to this pawn. Magnus goes back with his knight, e7. 
Uh, we get this trade of pawns. Rook f4, attacking the spawn. That is kind of hanging. Okay, knight f5. Alright, so they cannot take. Oh, I mean, they can take here, but they just uh, they just blunder this bishop. So they cannot take immediately. All right, so bishop has to move. Bishop f2. g6. Rook g4. Uh, they take the pawn. Rook c8. And, okay, so far, I want you to visualize who is better, slightly better, because apparently white is up a pawn. But what Magnus is going to do is take control of these four squares. These outer squares are also important. With his pieces, not with his pawns. Because now we are controlling... Let's just focus on these four for now. We're controlling one, one time and two times. Okay, these, these four squares. And black is controlling it. Yeah, more times, right? Rook, bishop and knight and also this pawn but okay so we get this rook to c1 putting it on the open file magnus pins the knight they cannot move it uh, well they can move it here protecting it so now we we get this trade of we get straight of knights uh, this straight of rooks now bishop d2 forking uh, forking these two pieces like alignment of the pieces now we get knight d3 king e7 so king is seven with the idea of putting the rook on c8. Rook g2. But before we do that, we play b6. Really important. Not allowing any counterplay and not allowing this knight in. We get king, uh, king f1, bishop e3. They cannot really trade, right? Uh, because this will be hanging this, this rook for king this rook. So they cannot play that. Uh, so after, after that, bishop, bishop goes to g1. They retreat the bishop. Rook h4. Okay, so far, let's think about it again. How much we control we have over these four squares? One. I'm, I'm going to change colors. Two. And then three. Four. Four times. Okay, we're controlling these four squares four times. And white now is uh, one two, three. So we are much better with black already. Rook goes to c2, rook takes on d4, and feel free to count again, because now we have even more control uh, with this rook, right? We're controlling extra, two extra squares with this, uh, with this move. Rook c3, king d7, bishop takes on e3, knight takes, the uh, king has to move, knight c4, and then we take this knight. Really nasty. Because if they take, now we're forking the king and the rook. So why resign after this? They don't even make this move. They just resign. They understand that this is over. Okay, so yeah, this was controlling the center. Very important. Next geometry tip is going to be recognizing the power of diagonals. Especially when we have the bishop. In this one, we have a really fancy move which is queen c6 giving up the queen after they take we take back and this is checkmate all right so long diagonals are super important if you are trading your knights for the bishop from the start don't do that keep your bishops yeah you want to keep your bishops let's see other examples this is also about recognizing the power of the two bishops the bishop pair in this example we have also a really fancy move so feel free to pause the video. It's a queen move. We play queen e6. Yeah, giving up the queen because after they take, this is checkmate. Yeah, this is covering the long diagonal and this is covering this diagonal. There's no escape. All right, so the next tip is visualize the right triangle, especially when you're trying to find tactics. Sometimes you know, yeah, there has to be something in this position. The right triangle is going to be formed by the queen. We have, for example, this queen, an alignment with this queen, and I don't know, we can form many right triangles in this, and the chessboard. Um, it's not infinite, but nearly. It's very, it's just very difficult to calculate because you have to consider how many triangles you, in which shape of the triangle. Anyway, 
In this position, we have a sacrifice, but it's just a, it's a mating too. Okay, we sack the queen. Oh no, my queen! I just hang it. Yeah, so after they take, now we have a right triangle with this rook and the bishop. We're using the long diagonal as well. And if you draw the initial patterns, it's not, uh, actually from the edge, edge eight, you're gonna see a right triangle, right? We also know the combination of a rook and a bishop, it might as well come for a queen. So it's almost like we have a queen here in this position, but we are only using uh, two pieces. We're not using the queen, right? Which is more valuable according to, to some theory, but no, not in this position, okay? Now that you saw the previous example, feel free to pause this video. It's exactly the same tactic, exactly the same. We have this pattern. Okay, maybe we can even visualize a right triangle here with the queen, but you don't have to see anything with the queen now. You only have to see with the rook and the bishop. Okay, so we have a right triangle here. And now, yeah, we can just take. We can just take this pawn, removing this defender, they have to take. And now we have this check, checkmate. All right, so yeah, I hope you visualize not only with the queen, I have more videos if you want to see more videos with the queen, but this is a very important combination as well, this tactic. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Join the channel for only $1, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.